Alright, I'm going to do a video now uh, going over how to strip and properly attach speaker wire to speakers and amplifiers because I've had a couple problems I've sorted out recently that were just done wrong and there's very good risk of damaging things if you do it wrong. So we're going to go over two types of speaker wire. I've got the clear coated uh, exposed wire like this and I've got the UL listed jacketed cable like this, so we're going to do them both, and I've got a bunch of tools, you got to have one of these around, whether it's just a straight up dykes, a little mini dykes, a scissor, uh, a proper wire stripper like this, or one of these like automotive crimper stripper tools, the cheap ones you kind of get at Walmart, and uh, we're going to hook it up to, I have a speaker with five-way binding posts, a speaker with spring connectors, and I've got my little Indeed amp, which has a combination mini five-way binding post that unscrews and has a hole in it somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Now, uh, I apologize if it's way too wide angle and you can't see what I'm doing. I'll try to do it real close to the camera. So let's start. We're going to uh, do this one. This is more common of speaker wire. And the first thing you're going to want to do, is, if you, can, if you can do it by hand, is split the wire can't do it by hand, like I can't seem to be able to do, take your wire stripper or scissor, give it a little cut at the beginning, just a little one, and then you should be able to do that. You should be able to split the two sides. Now, unlike a jacketed wire, let me, let me undo the jacketed wire, where you just, pr you don't cut, you just press, you want to leave a mark. You turn it, you leave a mark, you turn it, you leave a mark, you don't want to cut through it, you just want to like indent it, and then you can move up, grab, and then pull, and if it's any good, if you've done this any good, it should just stretch off. Of course I'm using the craziest goddamn, try something a little bit sharper, hold on. Yeah. This has a little pliers in the front, so it's not actually going to cut anything, it should just grab, and there you go. Slide it off. Throw that away. And now, like I was saying, unlike this stuff, which is clearly red and black, it's a little harder to find positive and negative on a clear jacket. You have to look for a lettering or some sort of line indicating which side is which. On this particular cable, uh, the Horizon 14 gauge is written only on one side. So as you go from one end to the other, you'll be able to say, okay, the indicated lettered side is positive, where, as if it was red. So, there'll be no other indicators along the entire length. So you just, okay, anything with lettering, positive. Anything with a line, positive. That's all you got to know. Now, now that you split it, you'll be able to put it into speakers. You know, you want to keep these from touching. The metal contacts in these touching is very bad. It means the, the amplifier gets a loop back of power and can catch fire. Or blow out. More likely to blow out than catch fire, but we're going to try to avoid all these things. So, um, if you only have scissors, I'll do this first with scissors. It isn't easy, obviously, but you're just going to, uh, sort of crimp. You're not going to cut. You're going to try to cut only through the plastic cover. And then you could either try to twist it off by hand, which I think I can do. some nail in there. All right. Now I've uh, I've gotten it off, just gently massaging it around the rubber plastic, and uh, doing so I've actually done a lot of this. See the strands that are coming off? These are bad. It means you've caught a bunch of it, and it's not really going to affect the sound. What's bad about these is when you are stripping wires over your brand new receiver, and it's got all those nice air vents on top, and when these fall in there, they're gonna do bad things to stuff they shouldn't be touching. So always strip your wires. No matter what tools you've got, always strip your wires over a clean surface on a table far away from your running or soon to be running electronics. So what else do I have? I have the little dikes. It's gonna be pretty much the same method here. Be real gentle, you're just sort of squeezing it. If you feel it cut, you may have gone too far. Oh. That's good. That's good. 
Now you could probably grab this and give it a little bit of a uh, thumb action. There you go. So, thing off still has some um, some strands, but not as many. Obviously, the uh, Dykes is a more precise tool for this job. Now, let's strip with a uh, wire stripper. This is what you should all have, at least one of. Now, on this will indicate gauge. This one goes from 16 to 26. And since this is very large cable, it's about... I, actually, this is 14, but... I'm going to use a 16. You're going to squeeze once. And then you're going to go back... And without squeezing it down all the way, because it'll strip things off, just sort of grab, grasp it, and then... And you could give it a twist if it needs it. You don't want to leave straight. When you leave it straight, they could fan out and do that. So you just want to give them a consistent twist. If you go clockwise, I guess everyone really goes clockwise. Big dykes I did, that's fine. Now this is a smaller cable. I would squeeze once with the correct hole, then move over to the bigger one to pull off the shielding. But since it's the largest cable this will handle. That's it. Twist, twist to keep everything together. Now you're ready to put this into a speaker. And you're ready to put this into a speaker. Uh, so let's do that now, and then I'll pull a Mac out metal in the garbage. We'll start with standard spring clips like this Erwin Vega has. You see this? Now, inserting the wire is pretty simple. You want to keep as much of the insulation exposed as you can and not see any metal when you're done. So let's see, where's the lettering? Lettering's on this side, that's hot. all the way in and then pull up, give it a nice bite. Same thing on the other side. You don't want any of those little strands shitting all over the place and touching. Anything that comes out could possibly touch and be bad. But that's it. Once you got them in there, once you push them up, that they should never come out again. Now the difference, when you take them out, you just do that. When you take them out, they're gonna be a little, rant, a little uh, messed up. So just straighten them out a little bit. You may actually have a couple strands fall off from the crushing action, tearing them off. Now, the other type, if they're not spring clips, they're going to be five-way bindings. And they're called five-way bindings because you could attach things five ways. Um, when you unscrew them, which I'm not sure if I get enough light for this. My springs hold up. It exposes holes that are back here, which I don't know if you can see. And you would just take your stripped tight speaker wire coils you find positive I'm actually going to do negative first you put them in that hole and screw it down and there goes the lamp we'll work further back again you don't want any metal showing after you've done this put the other side in you can stick it all the way in and back it out a little bit, just so you're not crushing down the insulation. You can only crush metal when you do this. And there you go. That's another properly hooked up cable. Now, these are called five-way binding coats because they'll do it. And I might be wrong about this. <clears throat> a little more unscrewing. In this way, in this way, they will accept well, normally they'll accept a twin banana plug. These particular ones don't, but you can get the individuals. So that way. Or you can get a spade connector, which is essentially just a, uh, a fork that would go in there and you'd screw down onto the fork. And I just don't have one of those hanging around because I haven't used spade connectors in like 15 years. So that's the way to hook up manual, completely raw speaker wire to a speaker. And uh, this amplifier is the exact same way as that five-way binding, you'd unscrew it. And there's very, very tiny holes there. In there, and the, these wires might be too big to fit. In fact, I guarantee you they're too big to fit. So what you need to do, tighten that down. 
is buy yourself some banana plugs. And banana plugs come either like this in a pair that are precisely three quarters of an inch apart, uh, peak to peak, which should work in speakers, should. They'll work here, like that, both positive and both negative. Some amplifiers, you get them to work positive and negative on one piece. And in spring connectors, actually, which is really odd, they will slide into the back like that. And now hooking up to this, where'd my screwdriver go? There it is. Hooking up to one of these, uh, but this particular type, the uh, these are the cheapest you can get. Requires a little Phillips screwdriver, a little flathead screwdriver. You unscrew the uh, terminals that are located inside those holes. You stick your wires. You could you could put them through the strain relief first. I'm just not going to get them up like that, and then screw those little screws back down. Careful, you don't unscrew these little screws out because they will fall. Here, I will screw this one out. And literally, you'll lose that, and this will be useless. So. Now I'll never get it back in. Or it'll fall in backwards. Yes, that's why you don't unscrew them all the way. Always just unscrew them until you can see through the hole where you're about to put the wire. Is that in the right direction? I'm assuming that's the right direction. So the next one goes in... Same way, straight through, tighten it down, and now you basically have just made it a lot easier to attach speaker wire to and from your receiver or amplifier or speakers if they will handle a double banana. Just check by getting a ruler out and measuring. This is 7 eighths, so a double will not work. You have to buy the individuals, which are here. And the way the individuals work, there are two types. There are the type that only feed from the back, and there are the type that feed from the side and back, like these are. Now, I'll link to these, and they're not going to look like this. They're going to have a little plastic ring indicating red and black. And these are cheap, I think, because they screwed up. You have to remove that red and black ring in order for these to crimp down all the way. Now let me show you how you hook these up. There's two ways you could do it, side or back. So if you're doing side, it's simple enough. Screw that in so you can just see through. Insert so you're not seeing any exposed copper. Tighten it down. And there you go. That would go into that or that or plug that into here. Now, the other way you could do it is from the back, which involves you putting the collar down, bending the copper over it like that, and then feeding it through, which actually I gotta feed this through first. Through, and then in, and then pull a little bit, and then tighten it down. So now you've got, this is how you'd attach it to the side, and this is how you'd attach it from the back, depending on how you want to position your, your wire. Now, the benefit of doing side is should in some strange occurrence where you need to pass through, most bananas will accept other bananas directly behind them and stack. I don't recommend doing this until you've asked someone on Reddit, what the hell are you doing? Why are you stacking them like that? And there's a straight one in there. Like that. You can't obviously plug into the back of the one where the wire is coming out of. Now, let's talk about, that's the end of if you just need to basically wire up your wires, you're done. I'm going to go into more obsessive stuff, soldering, uh, heat shrink, right now. So let's undo, let's undo this one. These are my favorite to make custom wires out of. Soundtrack provided by Interstate 76 The Game. Made on authentic 70s equipment in 1997. 
All right, so I'm straightening these back out. I'm losing a couple strands here and there, keeping track of them. Again, unless you lose like a third of them, you're probably gonna be all right. But more than five or six, I, I'd get a little worried. Just, just re-strip again. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide, unless it's too much, so where's my scissors? I'm gonna slide a nice two inch length of this over the wire. This is heat shrink, this is half inch heat shrink? Or no, this might be three eighths. And then I'm gonna cut some little pants legs for it. One. Make sure they're the same length. Two. So this is this is eighth. And I got the no, maybe this might be three sixteenths. I'll have to check the sides. They're not labeled on it. I'll leave those off for a minute. We're going to tin the end of these wires so that they cannot fray and fall apart anymore. And I'm gonna do that with some soldering paste. You're just gonna give it a little bit of a rub. This stuff causes cancer in California, so try not to get it on your hands too much, and if you do, wipe it off. Don't let your kids and dogs touch that stuff. And now I have resin core solder, which should mean I shouldn't have to use that, but my methodology methodologies differ. And I'm using a uh, chisel tip on this. Again, if you get a soldering iron, it may not come with a chisel tip, making this a little bit harder to do. Get a nice bead of solder on it, hold it under the wire, and just touch it to it. And it's done. It sucks it up and distributes it throughout. That's solder on there. And you can touch it. You can get that solder warmed up. Nice bead. Bam. Like magic. These aren't the cleanest I've ever done because I did crimp them into banana clips and such. But once you're done, if the ends are a little bit snarly, you can just clip them off in one giant chunk. Alright, now where are those feet pants? You can actually buy heat shrink pants and do this, but they, they cost too much for me. Now I'm going to slide up the big one, and hopefully everything will go together. There, there, there. Get yourself a little micro torch, like so, and just hope it doesn't run out of gas. Keep it moving. You're just warming it up. You'll see it shrink, you'll see it change color, the texture will change. There we go. And if you want, while it's still hot, you could spread this out. Ah! Self-sacrifice is important. I've squeezed the little crotch together there. And now these are permanent. And then you can count these. So you can't you can't mess these up now. These ends, and you could just do the same thing we were doing before with the raw wire. Put them in through the hole. The holes will be a lot easier to do. You don't really need to do them if you're going into banana clips. If you're just using the speaker wires like this, this is a way to pretty them up a bit and keep everything from falling apart. And of course, the exact same method could be done on these. I'm not going to show it on these because it's exactly the same thing. What have I missed? I didn't use this to strip, but it was just the same except the holes are down here. This is the bits for crimping onto things, so don't worry about that. Is that everything? Have we, have we discussed? Yep, I say speaker wires are covered. That's covered for speaker wires. Till next time.